We use my way today. You see? We use that this part also. Hello everybody, I'm Christian from Berlin and some of you know uh, that before I became a YouTube superstar with this channel, I played uh, hotel luxury hotels for about 20 years in London and Berlin and here I share my knowledge with you. If you want more cocktail piano, bar piano style, there is a big playlist for you with pieces and lessons and advice and hot tips. It's linked in the text box. If you would like to play in a hotel and you would like to know tips how to get in there, uh, at the end of this video, I will give you a couple of hot tips how to get jobs. And the light just went out. Hmm, okay, let's go. We will make a famous piece bar ready today. Enjoy. Welcome everybody to my little piano bar here without champagne, but with Earl Grey tea that's so much more classy. What's our job as a let's say, luxurious bar pianist. Generally speaking, we can say, <coughs> yeah, that we can also say, but dissolving. We're dissolving to create a, a luxury, timeless uh, ambience that lets you forget about all your sorrows and time and space. We do that by um, dissolving timing. We used my way today. You see? We use that by embellishing with, yeah, with this, but also. Uh, with bluesy idioms and, and we also play around the melody. So we're dissolving also the melody. In that sense, let's start. Um, the, uh, the sheet. Uh, the notes I give you on top are only a rough guide. I play the melody quite freely, so don't take that melody, but it's just as a guide for you, yep, to see where we actually are. Let's go, do it our way. Get that job. So let's see how, what I do here. Well, what is the basis? Let's have a look at a scale that I very often use when I bluesify a piece in major. And that's a kind of magical recipe, you will see. It's the major blues scale. Yeah, we have, we have these notes. Maybe occasionally a little dip on the, on the minor seven, but for now it's this one. So we use blue scale material from the major blue scale. And on the other side, we use technique we know from blues, like sliding notes, which, which we also have in, in country and, and many things, but it originates in blues. In pop, we have that too. So I, for once, the note material we can uh, improvise fills with or improvise uh, things around the melody and the technique. And we start, we have the melody and we see um, the melody gives us space. It's, and now, so now we have a lot of space where we, which we can already uh, use to embellish a little. And now, here, it's the, it's the major blue scale. Just leaving out this one. But I could, just to uh, show you. You see, it's the complete um, major blues scale now. So you could also play. See, same thing, downwards. Too early for this, uh, for the minor third. Um, maybe I should uh, mention a word on when you do this. 
it needs a lot of routine, uh, of playing routine on to bluesify a song. I give you a kind of a shortcut, but how do I know that this sounds? Because sometimes things sound good, sometimes they don't sound good. Like here in the beginning, just here. Does not, it's too much, does not sound good. Well, while you were playing with uh, with uh, 11 years old, uh, with you had friends and you were playing PlayStation, I was sitting at the piano and already looking out for stuff for you 50 years later. So I sort of, uh, you see my experience condensed just for you. My life I've got to give for you. Let's go on. Okay, so we have this, we have this. Uh, now we have uh, the E minor seven. Um, the E minor seven is the third degree of C. It does matter in what key we are. We have to follow uh, a little bit. You will see later if we leave uh, the key, we come to A7 and then it's not so easy anymore to play the C major blues scale. Here we are uh, C, then we have the E minor, which is the third degree, E minor seven with B in the in the bass, it's still C, okay? Sometimes this is also noted as um, a notated, notated, as C with a C with a B in the bass. You see both, okay? So, now, you can do the same, but here we don't want to play the same, like, Very nice cliché, very nice cliché here, especially with the octave here and this in the end. Keep that in mind. You can use that uh, when you try the same. You see, and we can also use the the uh, notes of the blues scale. And here we have the G minor uh, with B flat in the bass, like. So here we're leaving a little bit uh, the key of C. So what can we do then? And then it's a, it's a great recipe to stay in the, uh, to use the uh, blues piano technique. You see, with slap notes or, you see? We are G minor, so I just slipped uh, between chord notes. Chord notes are always safe, uh, safe, a safe path. You see, G minor, now just play, and now we come to the A7. Of course you can also, when we are in B minor, then you can always use a little bit of that um, four-star hotel stuff, like of the classical Swedish kind of sugary. I played also a lot, but also then sometimes a little bit more sophisticated in between. So, um, so just in case um, uh, you're not familiar um, uh, with my Vita, uh, I played for 20 years in exclusively five-star hotels. Uh, and uh, so I know many, many piano players in the genre. And uh, so I was actually um, I'm quite at home in hotel bars. Too much, too much. It gets on your nerves. First, you get to know all the celebrities and then uh, after a while it gets too much. Okay, so, um, and uh, that's why why I know that many of these, uh, there are many technically good pianists um, coming from Eastern Europe, and uh, but they uh, they always play the, the arpeggio style, what I call the cruise liner style. So, um, uh, we can do a little bit of that. It sounds nice and the people like it if you, so. Um, and use these. This is already a bit sty more stylish. And now we are coming to A7 show. And here on the A7, we cannot do much with the uh, with the C. We're leaving now the sector. We're leaving now the German sector. We're leaving now the sector because um, A7 is now already another dominant type and the dominant of coming up the D minor chord. So here, um, we can uh, again play a little bit of the sugary stuff like uh, you might know. Go to my uh, cocktail piano uh, playlist, jazz cocktail piano, bar piano playlist, where I show you the great embellishments you can do. 
Okay, here's a repeat one. So here it's like the butterfly going just along the A7 chord notes. It's your helper in all situations. You know, it... And, and here we have another possibility for a, a, for A7. It's... Uh, and that reminds again a little bit of the bluesy stuff. Again, it's the technique. Uh, here is the drone lick technique of blues piano. Uh, we drone lick means we have a note on top that is droning along with all the others, other notes that um, you play below that note. Dum bum 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 ba ba. You see, it's a great sound. You can play that up or down, and uh, so it has again this uh, luxurious. Um, special sound um, or this as I said or just a arpeggio whatever if you can play that then we come to the one now the a7 is like we, we're again from the beginning A7, and we, oh, that sounds always great if you have this little, all these little things uh, make you stick out from the bunch of the rest. So, and now we have the D minor, it's the one of the A7, but also it's the two uh, second degree of C. Yeah, it's a, con a temporary five of the D minor, and D minor. And here again, it's. We, let's just give an example of playing the. Uh, although this is the D minor of the uh, of the two, it still feels because we're coming from A7. It feels like the um, like a one. And if we play on this one, the uh, the the C uh, major scale, it doesn't. It's not right. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, you get fired. You just got your first job in the Five Star Hotel. Just got your first cheap white wine. No, that's the great thing about playing in Five Star Hotels. If you get a wine from a customer, it's always good. Because they don't have cheap, have cheap wine. Oh, imagine a customer comes to the waiter and says, Yeah, piano, the pianist is all right, but not that good. Do you have any cheap wine for him? I would, would like to invite him to a wine, but just a cheap wine. Get from, from the 7-Eleven next door. Okay, so here and here we can again stick to the uh, to the chord notes. Always a safe bet. Maybe including the seven. So and um, now listen to this. We have again the slip note technique. That's a really nice one here. Here again, I slipped from the chord notes to chord note, chord note, chord note, and then. Uh, and and you get you have your kick back, okay? So or here we again we use this uh, slip note technique. Sounds again a little bit a little bit bluesy, although it's just a slip note technique. Just playing the chord notes and connecting the chord notes. Or uh, this is a bit sugary also with six going again called doing connecting chord notes. So here would always um, play the safe bet. So or the one we've heard before, the sugary stuff. Ah yes. Here again. Going again, ending with a chord note from chord note. And now we have the G7. At this moment, the D5, the, the, the D uh, minor seven is again, is again a second degree because now it's D minor seven, G7, C. And the, uh, so the, it was the one coming from the A7. It's the tonic, it's a new tonic a little bit. And then it becomes again the second degree of D minor seven, G7. And C, and here we can sneak in a little bit of C. So um, um, now G7 and ah, a 
it is right what I said. The D minor now is a uh, is, uh, second degree. Uh, we come from here. Now we have the D minor cell with the seven uh, in the C, but still D minor. Wonderful. From there on. You see? It works. From, from here. Um, bam, bam. And here. Ah. Uh, uh. And now the C develops into a C7. And from this moment, the C7 is again a dominant type. It's a new dominant. And what should come now? Right, that's right. The, the, uh, the one of C. If C is the five, then F. Okay, so. Now. Oh, and now we should go. So let's have a look at it. Is the C7? Is the C7 is then uh, it's developed into here? We can still play. Um, now we're an F. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Now it's the C7. And we are reaching uh, uh, C7, and it's a temporary one, it's the F. And and on F, we cannot suddenly play the F, F blue stuff. That doesn't work. Like, uh, so. <laughs> you see? It's a little bit, it's a delicate thing. Uh, so. But uh, what I showed you before. Um, um, here, we can connect. It's a nice way. But um, for it for a seventh chord, for a major chord, the uh, uh, way of embellishing is just going the sixth down, and this is yeah they do that in classical, but they also do that in blues. You see, so we have the C seven, and now we are in F. And here I just play my, if I don't know anything, I just, I still have this, uh, the um, Floyd Kramer. Um, between the sixth and the fifth. And here is the F, uh, F minor. Yes, I know the sheet music says. But I always played it. I think I'm not quite sure if the sheet music is right here. But I play always like the F minor, maybe even F minor with the six here. Yeah. And here you have to follow also here. Again, you do the same. Yeah. So probably like. Oh. Yeah. The uh, hotel thing. See? And here we can have again, we have a breathing space. Okay, so. And here you can do the, uh, what I uh, showed you again. G7. So again, now we are on, uh, on open territory for C, and you can do all this stuff. But you got. Okay, now let us have a quick look also at the next part. I know you might want that, so we. And then we come. But, but we don't. 
I would prefer staying simple in the left hand uh, because I, I, I don't play this, this pompous thing like... Uh, so also for you to learn, I, I stay with the simpler left hand. So um, now... Uh, um, so... Again, the C is made to the new fifth degree to the new dominant of the coming F. You see, we have the same thing again, again. And here again. We could do all sorts of stuff again with it. Uh, now we are on C again. Um. You see, all major blues scale, okay. Now. <laughs> I'm quite fond of myself right now. Okay, because uh, here we can use our six again. And um, go now to the F. And and here we cannot do much. Um, we have melody. Yeah, a little bit of embellishment. This sounds nice, like um, with the, with this uh, the fifth and uh, fourth sound. Here we have fifth and fourth, and this sounds great. Why we are on F now, right? And I do the fifth here. This is the fourth interval, and here's the fifth interval. It has this crystalline, uh, nice sound. Huh? Fitz wind winter. So. Always great. It's a little bit of cruise ship piano, but stylish. And here we could use the slip note technique again on F. And, and on D minor now comes this wonderful spine tingling uh, chord progression. Yeah, everybody loves that. And now we are on, you know, we are on D minor, which is uh, the second degree of C. You know, you now you've learned it after all, because uh, coming up is um, yeah, you know it. Ooh, G seven and. Okay, and A minor was that, and then... This is the second part. And let's have a look. So we're coming from the F, and now we're going to D minor. And here... You see, then, the C stuff sounds good. It's now the clear D minor, the second degree of C, so... Um, Here. Going to G, hitting the right uh, note in the end. You can do all sorts of stuff again. Um, bam! There was the two, uh, two five thing. It sounds great also, in case you don't know it. I always recommend, again, go subscribe, and I don't have to explain it over and over again. So we go from G. Um, um, on the, we had that on, hold on. Um, on the. Um, no, there was a. Yeah, on the G here. G, we can on the G7 we can use again the uh, the C stuff the major blues scale and we play it in this way you can play the G7 right here with the nine here oh, it's too jazzy we get kicked out too if you play too jazz so now we have we have the uh, we play a little bit with the notes of the C um, major blues scale you see A then two finger I told two f I called it a two finger trick we just need two fingers to play like a champ like. It's just great. Oh, 
what do we have here? We have the A minor. And again, we have this drone technique here. We're just playing around the major third, the chord note of A minor here. Look at this, here's the here, target note is here. We just play around it. Like a golf ball. Um, he's let's just, you know, rotating around the, uh, the, 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 the hole and then, and then finally hit it. Yeah, piano is just like golf, uh, if you didn't know it. And we can, of course, play the on A minor, it's the sixth degree of C. Oh, everything! And... Go to D minor to seven. It's, the, it's, it's F uh, major six. See, that would be the minor blues scale. It's nuts. It doesn't fit. You see? Okay, so. Um, do, do, do. And F. Yeah, on F, it's now the four of, of uh, the four of C, and of course, in the four, uh, we can do. You can you can hold out on that a little bit, you know. No one will realize they're all drunk by now on uh, now on expensive whiskey. There was once uh, 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 the uh, customer I played um, was uh, late at night and uh, and he came and he ordered um, he wanted like uh, i think it's an, uh, a very expensive uh, grappa you know grappa or um, like a uh, liquor and it's called uh, louis 14 and it's um it's the most expensive uh, uh liquor they have it's one shot is 150 euro and um so it's an old one and he, he said oh what's that uh louis 14 louis 14 you know french king um f feudal feudal king um and he, 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 uh, uh, he just took it and then he got it down like <laughs> he said that was great give me another one <laughs> he was meant to drink that you know in very small sips and really enjoy it and ling have it have the taste linger in your mouth and he was just like a vodka or he was quite obviously quite uh, you know What's the word? Redneck? Is that the right word? Not insulting anybody, but you know, like, you know, no culture, no culture. Uh, so, so, yeah, that sounds great. Louis XIV, man. Yeah, right. Bam. Yeah. Give me another shot of that for 150. Okay, so, so much about five, five star hotel bars. Um, and here we are. Here we are. So, on the. We let it linger, like the Louis XIV. Here was for, for a little bit. I was tasting the, um, but very little, just to uh, go again into the into the major blues scale. way. I did it my way. All the way. Mr. Fuchs, get your stuff, you're fired. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this crusade, crusade on my way um, and uh, see you in my next one. Hopefully, hopefully it was fun with you. I don't, I never see you, but it's still fun with you. Maybe you don't like look that good. I don't know. Maybe it's better I don't see you. But the other way around too. <laughs> now, as promised, a couple of tips how to get jobs in hotel bars. First of all, 
luck has to be on your side. Um, that's clear, especially in, uh, in capitals like Berlin or London or Paris. Uh, there are a lot of artists and pianists, so uh, there's not really demand. Anyway, I'm here now with my tips to open, to widen that window of luck, because you can do a lot to make that luck, luck actually happen. Let's start. Um, a hotel has uh, three levels, uh, more, but um, the, you have the general manager, he's on top. Well, now you have the um, venture capitalist being on top of the general managers, but now, anyway, general manager. Then the, you have the so-called F&B manager. It stands for food and beverage manager. And you have the bar manager. And uh, who you want to talk to is the F&B manager. So if you want to go into a hotel and uh, address somebody, ask for the F&B manager. Most of the times he's responsible for the piano players. Um, biggest mistake uh, by many is the piano pianists go to the piano player and ask them to get to have get tips to get a job there. That's stupid. He's the enemy. <laughs> you you won't get any information from the piano player who's playing there because he knows like he wants my job. So don't do that. But many do that. I, I've, as I said, I've played many many times on table uh, and uh, I see the piano players coming in you see them immediately they look scruffy and they uh, they start to talk to you like sneaky questions and you know like okay give it up so um, uh, then okay you have the general uh, you have the uh, food and beverage manager but um, a lot of the times the pianists are organized uh, by an outside agency because the hotels are sourcing that out because they don't want to deal with the pianists that are too stinky and dirty and they don't want to do the hours and stuff. So it's an outside agency. Then no chance. They will just tell you, sorry, um, John, uh, it's done by an agency. You have to contact them. Okay, then that's that. You have to apply uh, at an agency. Maybe a word on that later also. Okay, but um, if you're lucky and it's not done by an agency, but um, by the hotel itself, by the um, F&B manager, um, first thing is you go there and you have a suit. Uh, many musicians who never did that um, come there like with jeans and uh, they look scruffy and unshaved like me at the moment. Um, wrong. You, you're just out immediately. So come there, take uh, maybe buy like a, it's a, a neat suit, have an iron shirt, maybe uh, already you, you come with a bow tie um, like this thing or with a, uh, with a tie. You've got to look neat and tidy because um, that already shows you, no, you have that appearance. It's very important. Don't underestimate that. Then if you're lucky um, and they are in need of a piano player, it happens sometimes. You have to, that's the luck bit. You have to find the right timing. So, um, for example, um, the financial crisis, then many hotels kicked their piano players out because they had to um, uh, cut down the costs. And then after a while, they put them in again. And that would be the right timing to apply, you know, when you were looking again. Sometimes they are not satisfied. You find a moment where they are not satisfied with the piano players they have because they are too loud and or they, they uh, whatever. Mostly it's they're too loud. And then that's your spot, you know, uh, to find by chance a hotel that is uh, in, um, in, uh, in need of somebody. Um, and I got my first jobs just like that. Out of luck, I just was there the right moment. Then you get a, a, a little bit on that later. Because um, I was a country boy coming from like northern Germany, small town, to London, to apply, get, wanting to play in the uh, five-star hotels. And I did get a gig. I'll tell you later how I did that. Um, so uh, then if, the, if you meet the food beverage manager and he says, okay, play a little. You know, we're listening, uh, whatever. They don't have taste. The general manager doesn't have an ear, a good ears. The food and beverage man, they don't know shit. I'm sorry to say that, but they, what they want is the first thing is, and this is the f next big mistake that most piano players do. They're nervous and they're playing too loud. The first thing is don't play good, but play soft. That's the first thing. Really, you've got to play very soft. Then um, play something uh, like first couple of songs that are catchy. So uh, you might get the audience to applaud. 
then you're already on a winning streak. When, when there are people sitting and you play something and they applaud. And for example, for me, a good recipe was always Pink Panther. Uh, that's, you know, that's catchy and everybody knows it's a hit. So um, don't try with sophisticated jazz and uh, whatever, you, your best voicings and stuff. No, 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 no. Or play Summertime and play it a little bit swingy. And now I get to the, po um, uh, get to the point um, and play, don't play endless solos at the, at the moment. Just play songs, three and a half minutes. Um, so you, you get the chance um, that there's a pause in between that somebody will applaud, you know. Uh, there was even a story like, um, that's telling you how stupid, uh, like how little taste management has. Uh, there was a guy and he wanted my job and he was um, like, I heard that I was gone at that time and he... Um, he was playing something and uh, he did an old trick. He was applauding himself under the piano. And what do customers do? They, they start applauding too. Because if, some, if somebody starts, the uh, others will start. And he just did it himself and it worked. And then they thought like, uh, wow, he's really good. How I, did my, how I got my first jobs. And I found out that there's a really good recipe because I got plenty of jobs in London. And there are many good piano players in London. Really many, they are better, uh, better than me. Uh, I was just one of them. So, um, but um, by chance an agency, like they have these huge lists of piano players on their lists, but they had a very tricky um, manager. He was managing the uh, regent that is now called the, uh, the Landmark um, Hotel. People from London here, Landmark on Marlebone. I played there for uh, three years. Um, and they had like, and they said like, he's German and he's very tough. He's just kicking all the pianists out. And we give you a chance, we give you one, one gig. And if they are all right, um, if you play all right, if nobody's complaining, then uh, we will see. And I played a little bit swingy. And I played a little bit blues. I played very soft, as I said, but a little bit of um, boogie boogie, like really slow tempo boogie boogie, but it was different from all the rest who just did this huge arpeggio stuff and they really boring what you think, like what I call cruise ship uh, piano. And I played a little bit swingy, all of me, bam, ba, doop, really easy listening style and soft. And he heard that and I saw the, uh, the F&B manager come towards me, like, like the German manager, a really cynic, and, uh, and I said, okay, that's it. I've lost my, uh, I just lost my job before I even started. And then he came, the F&B manager, also an idiot, um, came to me uh, uh, and he said, like, Mr. Nitschke really likes what you're playing. Could you play a little bit louder? So it was that I played a bit more swingy with a little bit of walking bass. And that already was different to what they, um, or the other uh, pianists thought they should do, like these uh, arpeggio, 19th century uh, arpeggio lines. So, and then I got the next, next thing, and then I played there for three years. Then, uh, sorry that I'm not in a, a real order here, because uh, I, I just remember things that are important while I'm talking. And another thing is, um, even um, during your, your audition, many um, piano players, they play like this. You know, heads down. Um, and that's not good. Uh, management loves it if you address the customers. You're there for the customers. So um, uh, play, uh, I mean, uh, play and smile and look around. Have eye contact with the customers. And then the customers will more likely give you tips. You're there for service. So you play like this and then, good evening, president of whatever bank of United States, or, or like, um, Whatever, that's the thing to do. You play like this. <laughs> Hello. Um, so keep that in mind too, also during, uh, during your audition. Very important. Don't be an introvert. Um, uh, next thing is agencies. Yeah. Um, tips to, to get into an agency would be um, generally agencies, uh, well, I know these and those. Some say like, no, no way we are like, we have far too many piano players, but some are always looking. It's worthwhile trying uh, on a regular basis. What an agency wants is um, they want, the best is if they can see you play already somewhere. So if you have gigs already, tell them where you play and then you can play. If you don't have that, um, if you just write, I'm really great. Yes, okay, that's nice. 
call me in 10 years. Um, so you, maybe you have a link. Um, also, not, uh, not just an audio link, because that can be faked, but maybe somebody recorded you um, uh, somewhere, like playing. Maybe you can sit down when there's a piano available somewhere in a shopping mall, um, and then you have somebody um, record you, so it looks like you have a gig. Uh, you know, like that. Um, and then you have a little bit of a YouTube video, um, two or three th songs, so they can see you. And on that YouTube video, you have a, you have a, you have a, a, a dinner jacket, a bow tie, and you look like just for the for the um, uh, for the for you for the audition, you know. And um, that's about it. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. I try to answer them if there are um, uh, questions uh, uh, left. I hope I could help you a little bit with that. Um, as I said, if you have questions, use the comments, and I say good luck. Bye from Berlin.